Good morning. Thank you very much for the invitation and being this uh, distinguished panel. This is my disclosure of any company I have any relation that has nothing to do with what I'm going to discuss today. So when I ask uh, Omar what he want me to discuss today, it's uh, why the balloon has been working and it's been successful in some other places as he, and it's not successful here, for example. And as you see, I had a boat called Diet that is sinking because it doesn't work. So just, uh, we used to say even that people that believe in reincarnation, you know, plan it to eat or do diet this life to eat in the next one. So people need to learn by history and by history, we know how the balloon was developed. It was through besoars. So some smart man discovered that people who had besoars, they lose weight because most of the stomach was already full and they couldn't eat much. But more interesting at that time, even Donald Duck and Daisy, they make jokes about the balloons. You have the balloon, as you can see here. So it was very famous then. There were problems with the design, as George just mentioned, like the band, for example, there were problems at the design at the beginning. A lot of balloons go broken. So it didn't launch. But before I moved to this country like 22 years ago, we did already more than 400 balloons uh, uh, outside the US. But there are a couple of messages that I want to, to leave with you. First one, we have it clear that the balloon is much better than diet itself, changes in lifestyle. There's no doubt about it. So that, that's make it crystal, it's been published, it's everywhere, so we know that. Second, we understand that there are very different types of balloons. I think we had uh, yesterday a big discussion about all the different types of balloons. One you fill with liquid, one you fill with air. Uh, some are adjustables now, some you can swallow, some they're gonna uh, open themselves or be eliminated. And the balloon business is growing, not necessarily the number of patients who get it, but also I got some reports that the balloon is also growing uh, here in our country. So there are advantages and disadvantages of each one. So I'm not here to promote any of the balloons. I'm here to try to understand better, and maybe you understand better, why the balloons has successful histories outside our country and why they are not that successful here. Any balloon you use have some good results. They have risk, ulcers, perforation. They all have problems, but all of them have something good, something bad, and something ugly. But when you take a look of the number of balloons that are placed outside the U.S. and how different balloons, because we have very few approved here by the FDA and very few that we use clinically, outside the U.S. there are many number of balloons. There are more than three swallowables. There are now balloons for a year, uh, balloons that you can put uh, uh, and adjust and de-adjust. Uh, so there are many kind of balloons and it doesn't change nothing. The FDA approved, for example, the Transpyloric Shuttle that some consider a balloon. I, I see this and I look most of the restroom when I was a kid, you put the restroom down and that's what it did. Uh, but it's not been clinically effective here. It's not been really marketing. Even that the results were good, but the problems can be bad. So let me tell you the biggest experience that is in, in, in the world is the Brazilians. In Brazil, around 4,000 balloons uh, are placed every year. Uh, in Brazil, the population is around 220 million. They do 100 to 10,000 surgeries, bariatric surgeries every year. We do 240 uh, with more than 100 million people more. But they place at least 4,000 balloons a year. And they publish well. They publish first the, the largest series in intragastric balloons in the world. It's been published, it was presented. Uh, I'm co-author of two or three of this paper, but big number of patients, very good results. But when you pay attention to what they did, they did it to different patients. And they have short goal terms. And short term goals also. For us it's different. You see, we want surgeons here in this country, we want to cure everything with a balloon or with a suture. Uh, we don't understand well that this is multiple interventions that we need to do. And if you apply this, and we did that in the past, more than 20 years ago, we, we put the balloon in everyone, BMIs of 50, 60, 70, and the results are totally different. Uh, the balloon is not gonna cure these people, the balloon are not gonna be well for everybody, but when you reach certain BMIs, 
impatient that, for example, and that you will see in Brazil. You call it cosmetics, but uh, the sister of someone is going to get married in six months. They had a balloon. They want to look better for the wedding. They're going to go in summer to use a new bikini, so they, they put it. We here judge the motivations. I don't. I think we need to use any motivation of the patient to help them to lose weight. And they publish in these uh, randomized control trials how good the balloon is, and the balloon is good. If you ask me how many of my patients after a year or two regain weight, I will tell you a lot of them, more than 80 percent. But because they don't enter in a program, and that's, that's our fault, that's not their fault. But it helps a lot of patients for the short-term goals. And you see this meta-analysis, there were nine RCTs, uh, a good amount of patients, BMI were uh, lower, but the percentage of excessive weight loss was very good. And I remember discussing this with George a long time ago, and we were happy with the balloons. The first seven days of the balloons are not nice. Uh, I don't talk to the patient for three days. I send some of my junior to talk to them because they call you names and things like that. The first three days are very difficult sometimes, but they're very happy with the results. And this is probably the biggest experience ever, 40,000 balloons published by the Brazilian group. And most of their indications are either to very big BMIs to make them lose weight to go to surgery or what we call cosmetics. There are BMIs between 28 and 32. And those were the better results are. And now you understand why it's not that good here. And when you read the consensus that they did, then you start to find why we cannot do it here. They want to remove a balloon and place another one. Our balloon here, I mean, the, the balloon costs around $3,000. The whole procedure will be $8,000. You can have for $2,000 the whole procedure there. So when surgery costs very similar to a balloon, then you need to put in a balance if it's worth it or not, then you don't do it. Same and same again. In the consensus, half of what they do, we don't do. And then I read through the whole consensus. I look at this, even what there is lucky consensus, but it means that they are doing it. 53% thinks that the endoscopy should decide how long they leave the balloon. If we say that in the U.S., I mean, the lawyer is the next one in the door. So we don't decide how long the balloon is, as the company tell you, six months, a year, three months, four months. We cannot do that. So the way they do it, the selection process is totally different. And look at this. This is one of the best papers. It's intragastric balloon therapy in BMI, less than 35. And I think it's one of the best uh, used for this balloon. Also, if you use it in these randomized control trials, every balloon, different publication, the results are very similar. Difference in the type of complication, a little bit of other different, but they are similar. And RIM published uh, uh, in, in, in New York how you can use this even for f fat liver disease, just to make them lose and decrease the risk, and now we do a BPD. So I think I think we 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 very difficult for us to do this, but also reimbursement. As you know now, there is reimbursement possible for this for this patient, uh, and they say, okay, let's do the swallow balloon. There is no complication. There is every balloon will have complication. You need to follow to X-ray, so make it maybe sometimes more expensive than endoscopy. The balloon is going to go as you can see four months later in the small bowel, and when something goes through the small bowel, you can get small bowel obstruction. So you can have problems with each one. We haven't found the solution for the perfect balloon, but they do their job somehow. And if we improve the indications, as we discussed yesterday with Marina, if we add medications, you know, I'm Colombian, I will never say drugs, but if we do medications and we do balloons, then we cover that gap. And we have a gap that we have to cover. We cannot be that extreme in that one. So in conclusion, I will say that the cost in our country, the indications we use the balloon in our country, what we say but we don't apply that we need to intervene, everybody's a chronic disease, we need to do multiple interventions, we don't do that. We're still thinking that we do the biggest operation and we cure everybody. And we need to decide if we're gonna keep doing a stepwise intervention or we're gonna do simultaneous Mix intervention, endoscopy, balloons, suturing, and medication, and change of life. I think that's going to change the way we see this endoscopic intervention in the country. Thank you very much.